Hi, this is Gail with Bernina of Naperville, and I'm getting ready to transform some of my Ruby Star Society rayon that I got at my friends at Bernina of Oklahoma City and turn it into this Eve dress from Sew Over It. Now, I love their patterns because they've got this awesome retro vibe, and I also like them because they have digital download versions if you're unable to shop at Bernina of Naperville. And right now, this Eve pattern is on sale at the store. So you might want to look it up. But I'm not going to quite show you how to make the dress. But I, when I was making this, I started thinking, you know what I think would be a really good tutorial? A short little quickie is flowing edges. So, you know, like when we get a rayon that's kind of slippery dippery when we try to manage it, it can be a little tricky. Like, how am I going to overcast the edges? How am I going to hem this? What's going to look good on what kind of fabric for the style of the pattern? So I'm just going to show you a couple of uh, blouses or pants that I've made. And then I'm going to show you how to do some edge treatments and seam treatments, depending on whether you have a a sewing machine or a serger and typically I use both of mine um, I I see my serger as the major accessory to my sewing machine now of course there are knit garments that I've totally made completely on the serger but in general when I'm working with something flowy and drapey like the dress that you see me wearing here or this one that's getting ready to be made I use a combination of both and one of those secret elements is the rolled hem, the narrow hem, and a rolled hem using a Bernina number 64 foot. So let's go ahead and have a look at what I've got for show and tell, and then let's see some quick little tutorials to maybe help you sew with your flowy fabric. So this is a ready to wear dress that I love this is super cute on and it's got a lot of really nice details and the one thing that I really want to point out to you for those of you that don't have a serger or anything like that you might see that this has very nice edge treatments that were done on a sewing machine and on my Bernina, I could reproduce that off the edge stitching. You might remember something like this, very similar, when we did our little Easter basket with the butterflies and that off the edge stitching. Well, that's the very same thing that you see here. So if we look further on this dress, you see just a little bit of overlocking, but honestly, that could be done with a little zigzag stitch. But there's a lot of details on here that's all rolled hem, and sewing machine. And this is a nice like rayon soft material. And sometimes these slippery materials, it's like, how do you do the hems and things like that? So that's kind of an inspiration piece. And I'm gonna go back to this a few more times in some other videos to talk about some of these stitches. Like, you know, you can see here, there's kind of a Spanish hem stitch look here and everything. But nonetheless, let's put that aside. So here are some pants that I made. And these are from a pattern in Inspiration Magazine. These are the tulip pants. These um, pants were pretty simple. They are literally just like a front and a back piece and then a little waistband here. And um, one of the things with these is I really didn't want to hem them with... Um, you know, the serger part showing, and I didn't want to do a rolled hem on the serger, so I did just a number 64 rolled hem foot, and I rolled hemmed the hem before I stitched the sides together. And you'll notice here that I did use a serger to overcast the edges so they don't fray out. So I do use my sewing machine and the serger together. I, I rarely just do everything on the sewing machine, um, but there are ways that you can if you don't have a serger, but a serger is so much faster when you're finishing off the edges. So here's another example of where I used a serger a little bit more. So on the bottom here, I serged the edge 
and just top stitched with my sewing machine. And then of course I serge the seams here to make sure that the edges don't unravel. But on here, there were a lot of these ruffles out of the self material and everything. And you can see here that I just ran it through the serger with a three thread rolled hem. And that it this made this blouse go together so much quicker than if I would have tried to roll those all over with some kind of rolled hem or foot. I just finished up this dress and this dress definitely was done a lot on the sewing machine, just straight stitching to turn this attached scarf together. The scarf is attached with the sewing machine, you know, blah, 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 blah. But I, I used the serger to save the edges in here, but then I used a rolled hemmer on the machine to do that hem because I just really wanted the look of a little skinny, skinny turned over hem, but I would never try to iron my fingers and do all kinds of weird stuff. I used a number 64 rolled hem. I did it on the hem of this dress as well, and I did it on the hem of the lining. This is another pattern from Inspiration Magazine. Let's have a look at how we would do some of these things. And I'm gonna to be toggling back and forth between my Bernina 790 Crystal Edition and my Bernina L890 Overlocker. Okay, now something that you wanna think about before you get started is the speed that you wind your bobbin. Can you believe that if you wind your bobbin too fast, it can cause puckering in your fabric? So it's really important to keep your fabric nice and smooth by decreasing the speed that you wind your bobbin. And just a little FYI, polyester thread tends to tighten a little bit more when you sew it at a faster speed, while cotton and rayon tend to relax a little bit. So if you're using an all-purpose thread or a poly thread, slow that bobbin winding speed down just a little bit. So let's start here at my sewing machine. And for the first thing, we're just gonna do an overcast stitch or an overlock stitch. And you can do that on your sewing machine. I'm using a 2A. 2A is what you use with the machines that have a um, nine millimeter wide stitch capability. If you have a sewing machine with five and a half millimeter, then you want to use the regular two. So this foot has like a little pin down there. And that pin is what you butt your fabric up against. And it, the pin gives the stitch a little bit of loft so it doesn't tunnel the edge of our fine fabrics. So I have a little bit of rayon here. This is a fun, funky print from Ruby Star Society. And so there are multiple ways that I can overcast the edges. I'm gonna first start by selecting that number two foot, or two A, and then I'm going to just pick a regular zigzag stitch. And all I'm gonna do here is lower my presser foot and line this material up to the edge of the foot. All right, and then I'm just gonna do the zigzag. I'm going to make the zigzag stitch four and a half millimeters wide. And you can see that when the needle goes off the edge of that pin, it's just going off the edge of the fabric. And now this is just gonna make a really fine little delicate zigzag on the edge here. So you can see what that looks like on that edge and on that edge. There's a little bit of whiskering, but in general, not so bad. This is what happens when you feed too much fabric, when, when you go beyond that pin on the foot. So you have to be very mindful as you feed it through that it goes right to the edge of that pin. Let's do the same thing with a different stitch. This time, I'm gonna use the number 10 stitch. Now, this is a little bit of a more detailed overcast stitch. On the machine, you can see 
there there's the, my machine looks like from the screen and there it looks a little bit more like what you would expect a serger stitch to look like but it's don't be deceived it's not the same as having a serger So there is a little bit. Now that rolled it still a little bit, but that looks that looks okay. A little bit better than just the zigzag stitch maybe. So one seam that you might consider if you're working with a sheer or a delicate fabric and you don't want any raw edges showing or any stitching on the edge of the material to show is actually a French seam. And a French seam is where you do two passes down a seam. The first pass is going to be with the fabrics wrong sides together. And you're going to do just slightly less than a quarter of an inch, a real skinny little stitch. And I'm using my quarter of an inch foot for this. And I'm just going to go right down this seam, really narrow like. And I want to make sure that my iron is on because once I do this initial seam, I want to press it open and then press it on the fold. So I just did a little bit less than a quarter of an inch because most garments take a seam that's five eighths. That's the seam allowance is five eighths of an inch. So an eighth is two eighths. So if you add that to three eighths, you get five eighths. So that's why I did just a little bit less than a quarter because there's going to be a little bit of a discrepancy lost when I fold this and press this over and everything. So I've pressed my seam open right in there and then I pressed it with a nice crease again. So now it's time to stitch that 3 eighths of an inch seam. And we're gonna keep this right against that line just there on my machine, which is right here. It's the very, very side of the feed dogs right there. And this is a quarter, and then this is the 3 eighths. So I'm gonna be using that one. And there's our seam. So a nice little seam and then when we open it up it's pretty on the inside. So that's a French seam and that can sometimes work. Now where it isn't going to work very well is if you have a seam that is on a curve because that one it doesn't lend itself to that very well but it lends itself to sheer materials where you've got a little bit of flow with the dress. Now, let's hop on over to the serger and look at some options with that. So a serger is great, a four thread safety, a four thread overlock with integrated safety seam is pretty much my go-to stitch that I use. And we can drop our presser foot down and just simply stitch. And all that does is just kind of trim the little whiskers off the fabric and save our edges. And you can see the stitching and what it looks like on the other side. And that makes everything nice and flat. And then I would do that to my pattern pieces and just seam it on my sewing machine and I would be good to go. Of course, there are other options if you had something really sheer that you wanted to manage, and I'm going to show you that on some chiffon. So I'm switching to a three thread narrow seam where I've removed my left needle, 
and I have adjusted my cutting width to 7.5 and I have my knife cover insert all of that is good the only change now, so I've taken the left needle out, I've adjusted the cutting width, and I'm pulling my rolled hem towards me. And now it has made some changes to the stitch, but I'm ready to go with this. I'm happy with it. So now I wanna show you how I would seam these delicate pieces of chiffon. So we're first gonna put them right sides together and now I would be seaming this with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. And so I'm gonna use my seam guide that came with my serger. So I wanna measure 5 8 of an inch from my needle and there are corresponding marks on the foot. So the right needle is that notch right there. So I'm gonna measure 5 8 of an inch from that notch right there and there. So that's where I'm gonna butt the fabric up to. The hardest challenge here is keeping the slippery fabric together. All right, so now I'm gonna line this up here and line my material up to the edge of that guide and simply stitch. This is a nice strong seam that works to join your pieces together. So if you see that seam from the outside, it just looks like a little narrow, narrow seam, but this is very secure stitch to do on the inside seams of your chiffon and very gossamer type fabrics and much easier and faster than a French seam. Another thing you might want to do with some flowy rayon or chiffon type fabrics is a narrow hem. So I'm using that foot number 64 with the little hem on it here and I'm actually gonna hem this curvy edge here. Like, let's say this were the edge of a dress or the edge of a little cap sleeve or something like that. And with a rolled hem foot, you work wrong side up, just like this. And sometimes with the rolled hems, you feel like you need to be a little bit of an octopus. So I make sure that my freehand system bar is installed to lower my presser foot up and down. And then I also make sure that I'm able to stitch and one thing I have to tell you is you don't want a little notch like that. Let me get a better piece here. We'll use that for our rolled hem on the serger. <laughs> but one thing you wanna make sure that you do is create a little handle to kind of encourage this material through the machine. Something that I want you to be mindful of when you're using your number 64 foot is I do not like using hover with this option. So I am going to go over to my sewing adjustments and make sure that hover is off here. and that it's at zero millimeters there. Got my straight stitch and I'm using the foot as you can see and I'm gonna lift and I'm just gonna stitch very carefully onto the edge of this material for a few stitches. Then I'm gonna back stitch 
And that's where I go into my I button and use the continuous reverse because I don't have to have three hands to do that. Okay, now I'm going to lift my needle and my presser foot and pull and cut. So I have like a little long tail or a handle here. Now that doesn't look like much there on the end, but that's going to help me encourage this fabric through the foot. So then I'm actually, have to disengage backwards mode, I'm going to roll this piece and this 64 foot is a four millimeter rolled hem. So it's gonna be about like that. So then I'm gonna take my handle and also like a little stiletto helps here. And I'm gonna hold my th fabric through here, lowering my presser foot getting my needle down into position and I'm just going to stitch like two stitches. I'm going to lift with my knee lever and then I'm going to wiggle this fabric around the flute of my rolled hem. Okay, it all works together here. So now gently, now I'm, I'm still encouraging my thread from the back here. And then once I get it kind of started, then I'm gonna start playing down here. So I put my finger right there to give it some tension and then I roll this curve over my thumb. Now, you saw my little dress that's on the dress form in pieces. So this is how I plan to do the edge of the sleeves on that dress, because I really want this kind of look. I have a little pucker there in the beginning, but I'm not too worried about that. And so now that I'm getting started, and sometimes it's easier to go ahead and do this once you've seamed it. Like if you have a skirt or something, you can just kind of start in the middle of here. But once you get kind of around it and good, it comes out great. And it does take a little bit of practice. And it's hard doing this just right with the camera here because normally I kind of sit to the side, but I can't do that because then my knee would be bumping the tripod. But anywho, I'm getting around it. It's happening. All right, so, you know, obviously it needs to be set with a pressing, but Here's where we started. Now in this case, if this were like, you know, my sleeve or whatever, I'd be putting this together and then hemming it and that little pucker would be in the seam allowance anyway. But that's pretty cool, huh? So let's look at the alternative to this on our serger. I'm gonna set the serger up for a three thread rolled hem, which is stitch number eight. And then the only thing different that I'm gonna do with this machine is I'm gonna thread the blue path with this soft lock thread. Soft lock thread is like woolly nylon, only it can be ironed. So I'm going to trim my thread that's in my blue path and remove it. And then I'm going to get my needle out of my serger by pressing my heel tap. Open my door here, take off my waste collector, open this and I'm gonna pull my threads through. There we go, flossing that soft block through here. And sometimes on a new spool, I have to cut it. 
Of course, the fan for my heat is blowing right now while I'm doing this. Yes, I said heat. It's April and we still need the heat here in Chicagoland. I'm gonna turn it to threading mode and put it right through here. Now for the soft lock thread, I also like to adjust my upper looper to a little bit less tension. And I can do that by touching the blue on the screen or the external buttons right on the serger. And I put it at three, like I said. And um, another thing too, if you find you're using this a lot and you're making that adjustment a lot, you can simply just save this stitch and you can even name it soft lock so you know that when you work on this in the future that this is your soft lock rolled hem and I'm just going to say RH. All right so now that I've saved that I'm ready to stitch. So remember our little chiffon piece? Well now I want to make a rolled hem on this and we could set our seam guide here to whatever your desired hem width is gonna be. I'm just gonna keep it right at 5 8 there. And now everything is good to go because the last stitch I had stitched was a rolled hem. My um, tensions are all automatically set. So here we go. So there's our rolled hem, and that was a very easy way to handle this material. So as you can see here, I've got my little samples and probably going to fall out of my hand here. But so this is something that I was trying out for the edges of my little wispy sleeves that are going to be on this guy here. And then I also was auditioning over overlock stitches for the edges and then finally there's another blouse that I have in the works where I was doing some work on this Kaufman chiffon. So are you ready to give this a try yourself? If you have any questions don't forget to leave us a comment and if you want to see more tutorials like this check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy it's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville and there you can like ask your questions, and subscribe. Thank you.